Okay guys, uh, as you saw by the title, uh, today we're going to be uh, redoing some Grand Cherokee rotors. Uh, here uh, you see me trying to find the center point between these two uh, bolt holes. Uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect fit, just something that's an estimated, uh, more or less centered. This will come in handy when we're trying to redraw and uh, align some of the other holes from the other rotor and the hub that we're going to be using as a jig. So here, um, the Grand Cherokee rotor sits directly over the Cherokee rotor and it fits flush. Here I centered that mark right between the two uh, holes where the studs go to the, the hub. We're going to be placing this on the drill. I really recommend that if you want to try this to use uh, a drill press like this or a bigger one if you have access to one. Um, using a hand drill is not going to be very uh, convenient as it's uh, going to pretty much make it almost impossible to get straight holes uh, through here and what you need is something that's uh, not exactly precise but very close to. Here uh, I placed that uh, Cherokee rotor over the Grand Cherokee rotor using that um, center mark so that I can get that um, new hole that I'm trying to center in between the, that, that uh, right on that mark that I made on that uh, Grand Cherokee drill, uh, that Grand Cherokee rotor. So here I'm using the drill bit to kind of keep centering that drill bit. Uh, we make the final adjustments onto the drill press and stabilize our pieces here. Uh, I'm using a 5 8 a drill bit uh, and here I'm using some uh, gear oil as a lubricant. Uh, other people use transmission fluid, other people use cutting fluid. You can use pretty much whatever you want. The trick to, to use is uh, you want to go at a slow speed and uh, give it time so the heat doesn't build up as much. Um, here I'm trying to use the drill bit to finish centering off that, that rotor onto that mark I made onto that Grand Cherokee rotor. And uh, we're going to be taking it slow. Uh, side note, yes, I, I did not put on any PPE here. Uh, please use PPE when you're doing yours. Don't be a fool like myself. Here we're going to speed things up a little bit. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue cutting and uh, cleaning out our surfaces. Uh, remove some of the shavings so that we can see what we're doing in here. I'm going to take it nice and slow, giving that drill bit a little bit of time to cool off. And uh, making sure that that, that uh, rotor doesn't dance around. That uh, hub, that Cherokee hub, uh, does a good job of keeping both uh, rotors aligned to each other. And here we go again. Try to continue cleaning that surface. What we're going to do here is we're going to remove that Cherokee rotor and that hub uh, assembly from under that Grand Cherokee rotor. That 5 8 drill bit fits directly over uh, that new hole of the, of the Cherokee rotor. So we're just going to finish drilling through and make sure that we have straight and that we're able to come all the way through. So here we're able to press that drill bit all the way through. And now we have a new hole that we can use to continue stabilizing the rest of the rotor uh, jig assembly that we've got here. Uh, we're going to clean up our surfaces here in a second. We're going to align the holes. That new hole is going to actually align with that, um, that old uh, Cherokee hub. Uh, and we're going to use a bolt to align the hub with that WJ rotor and that XJ rotor. And you're going to see that here in a second. And that's going to be our new jig. That hub is going to keep those um, those two rotors centered. And that bolt that's going to be going through is going to keep that uh, whole jig set up from rotating around that, that, uh, that, uh, cent that center of that hub. We're going to clean our uh, mating surface here, if you will. 
I'm going to place the Cherokee rotor directly over it. Here I'm using a 5 8 bolt. Um, I've got a 2 inch bolt, but if you get something like a 1 inch bolt or an inch and a half, you should be fine enough to put a, a, a nut on the other side. It's not necessary as this uh, 5 8 bolt kind of grasps onto the edge of that uh, hub assembly and it kind of just gets stuck on there. So it's, it's enough to keep that um, rotor from turning on each other. Here you're going to see more or less what I was talking about. Um, we're going to take our, our whole jig assembly. There you're going to see it, it rotates because the hub is still sticking out from the bottom. And here we see that these two do not move uh, on each other. And they're still centered on that hub. And we're going to try, take that over to our uh, drill press. And we're going to do our best here to align the holes and make our adjustments that we need. Here again, we're using the drill bit to kind of center. We're going to lubricate that uh, hole that we're going to make. Now, I didn't use a, a smaller bit to start off the, the, the drill uh, or and then step it up to a larger bit mostly because it's a little bit difficult. So here in the process, you're going to have to sacrifice that uh, 5 8 drill bit, especially towards the end. And if you're doing two rotors, the one drill bit should be enough for two. All right, sorry about the beeps. Uh, I'm still here at work trying to do this voiceover. So uh, pretty much uh, what we're doing here is we're going to repeat the process uh, between um, all of these uh, holes. Uh, we're gonna keep repeating this process of cleaning up uh, after the metal shavings, lubricating, giving uh, enough time for that drill bit to cool down in between uh, drill presses. Take it nice and slow. Um, don't rush it. You know, and this is something that that should you should be taking your time with. Rotate the assembly or the whole jig setup and continue on with the next holes. The Th that old Cherokee rotor does a good job of keeping that drill bit from wanting to wander around. Uh, and it guides that, that 5 8 drill bit pretty nicely without having to um, use several different bits to step it up to that 5 8 drill bit eventually. So take it nice and slow. Take your time with it. Clean up your, your, your surface or clean up your, your work area. Uh, please wear your PPE. Don't be a fool like me here. And uh, yeah, uh, here we just keep going. So as you can see, this is something that can be done at home. Uh, it's not going to be perfect or machined, but you do end up with a pretty decent result. Uh, I'm able to get that uh, new uh, rotor, that re-drilled rotor, to sit perfectly fine over that, uh, that Cherokee hub the way that we needed to. Um, I don't see any, foresee any problems with it. I'll show you momentarily a few pictures of uh, how it came out. I did both rotors um, here in one in one sitting. Uh, pretty much uh, took about roughly an hour, I want to say. Here we are disassembling our uh, jig setup. We're going to remove that 5 8 bolt. And separate our rotors, obviously, as you can see here. Now clean up our surface a little bit since it does have a little bit of that uh, smelly gear oil. Towards the end of those, uh, that last hole, that drill bit did start to show its dullness. And here is that uh, hub 
with the studs and that Cherokee hub that that uh, Cherokee hub easily accepts that uh, Grand Cherokee rotor now with the new uh, bolt pattern drilled into it here is what it looks like with you can see the new bolt pattern here is with that rotor and the hub assembly in it here we did both of them and just a size comparison between the XJ and WJ rotors I'll say thanks for watching guys uh, catch you on the next video